So, welcome to monetarism. Monetarism is another cause of inflation along with demand pull and cost push factors. So a third cause of inflation is the idea that inflation is always the result of an excess of growth in the money supply and this leads to inflation. This is based on the research of Milton Friedman who won the Nobel Prize. Um, and Milton Friedman said inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Now you might think that really is a statement of the obvious because obviously inflation is to do with the value of money. However, this idea is that if you print an excessive amount of coinage, of notes and coins, it, it will result in inflation. Uh, we can see this clearly in the 1920s in the Weimar Republic with hyperinflation in 1924 as a result of an excess of growth of the money supply. So this is based on the Fisher equation, which is this simple equation here. MV is an identity with PT. So basically MV equals PT. The M stands for the money supply, which is obviously the amount, for example, of notes and coins or money in the economy. V stands for the velocity of circulation. And that really means the speed at which money moves around the economy. And P stands for price level. And T stands for the level of transactions. And the simple idea of monetarism is this, that if we increase P, it will always result eventually, generally after a year and a half, in an increase in the price level. Because V and T are assumed to be stable. Uh, by the monetarists, make assumptions of course. So if we just illustrate this, say our money supply is um, five pounds, okay, the velocity of circulation is say five, okay, um, say the level of transactions is two, okay, then obviously the price level is going to be ten. So five times five is twenty, two times ten is twenty. Okay. And now say we double the money supply to ten, then what's going to happen is that the velocity of circulation will stay constant at five, the level of transactions is still two, and therefore the inflation level is now going to be twenty. Two times twenty is forty, five times ten is of course forty. So those, those figures are just to illustrate this, okay? If, if we look at specific people, say we've got four people in the economy, so they each um, exchange a product with the other, so A buys something from D, B buys something from A, C buys something from D, B, and D buys something from C. Each of these cost one pound, okay? So they each pass on one pound. So the total money supply in this economy will be four pound. Okay. Say they buy one product, so the velocity of circulation is one because each one pound moves along one. Okay. And the level of transactions, there's been four transactions in the economy, okay, and therefore the price level is one. So one times one equals one times one. And say we double the amount of money, we give each person an extra pound, okay? So everyone has an extra pound. Now the thing is, are they going to be really better off? In real terms, are they going to be better off? I think the answer is no. We're still transacting the same, num the same amount of goods, the same real goods. Say we buy a loaf of bread from each other, yeah, there's still four loaves of bread, so there's four transactions and that's really the output of that economy. So they each have twice as much money, but they're not better off, okay? So um, we now have, the money supply is now eight. The velocity of circulation is still one. Those two pounds, each pound is moving one person, okay? The, the number of goods in the economy is still four transactions, but of course, the price level has doubled. So that 2 times 4 equals 1 times 8. Okay. So it's a simple theory. It's assuming that V and T are relatively constant, are stable over time.
okay, and therefore increases in the M, the money supply, if they're excessive, they result in an increase in the price level. Now, modern monetarism is based on this equation, and what they did, of course, is they got rid of T, and T can be replaced with Y. So in some textbooks, you'll see this equation referred to as MV is identical with PY. Now, the, the key thing about monetarism is it seems to work when you have huge increases in the money supply, such as occurred in the Weimar Republic in the 1920s. However, um, it seems problematic, for example, in the 80s, when the UK economy under Mrs. Thatcher adopted monetarism. Monetarism seemed to fail to be what controlled inflation, because inflation did come down, but not according to the monetarist targets. It came down really as a result of huge recession, therefore demand pulled inflation fell. Anyhow, just to stick to the key points, the assumptions that monetarists make are questionable, and Keynesians would question these assumptions. Is V really stable over time? And certainly is Y, or T in the previous equation, is that stable over time? Um, and I think a lot of people would question those assumptions. So the key thing is monetarism is the idea that inflation is always caused by an excessive growth of the money supply, as illustrated by the Fisher equation. Okay, thanks for watching.